Hey, good morning. It's Richard Lund, on my journey to live a healthy hundred years. Today it's breakfast. I've talked about breakfast before, but I want to re-emphasize one thing about my natto. I, I eat natto every day. I make it at home using the uh, bacteria that comes from the commercially available frozen natto that I can get at the, the Asian supermarket. And the reason for doing it is to add two things to my diet. One is natto kinase, which is an enzyme which is a fibrinolytic. It's basically something that helps break up fibrin in the, in the bloodstream, uh, particularly where there are, are possible clots. Uh, similar activity to aspirin, as I understand it. Now, some people say that when you eat natto, the natto kinase gets destroyed by the stomach acid. But I have read recently about some studies that indicated that by eating natto, you do get it into your bloodstream. So that's, that's what I've learned this week. But the reason for talking about it this week is I went to my dentist for my semi-annual teeth cleaning. <laughs> so the practitioner, Salby, after she finished, and she's always careful because she's got to use those powerful um, brushes or whatever it is that they polish your teeth with near my beard. <laughs> and we don't want to have that rapidly spinning thing grab a hold of the, the beard hair. So it's always a little bit nerve wracking for her. But when she finished, she said, oh, today you did, your gums didn't bleed at all. They're completely much better. What happened? What, what, what's going on? So I thought about it for a minute and I thought, the thing I've changed in the last six months is to add the natto. So the idea that there's something good that happens to your, your uh, circulation of the blood, your tissues, even remineralization of teeth, which some people claim may be happening. <laughs> so all I'm saying is it's a good change. It's a good thing. And I'm really, really happy to continue that. And I probably will for, you know, for the next... 35, 40 years, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, then I just thought I'd talk about, and I also tried one other new ingredient in my, my breakfast cereal this week. So I eat oats every day. You can see the oats. Now there's a bunch of stuff in here. We've got uh, blueberries, you know, which are delicious and nutritious. Goji berries, which are hard to pick up uh, and you know, isolate little tiny red berries come from China. And then today I've got sea buckthorn berries. And um, I, I don't remember a lot about sea buckthorn, but I think they have um, uh, maybe uh, omega-7 or something like that. And <laughs> weird, weird food. Banana, of course. And when I cook the oats, I put in the ground flaxseed. Um, and then I have a few walnuts. Not to go crazy, but again, to provide just a little bit of omega-3. So here on my home, home brewed uh, broccoli sprouts, <laughs> if I get some out of here, these are an interesting food because they give you way more of a particular part of the diet that I really look for. There's a molecule called sulforaphane and uh, it's been made famous on, on YouTube um, by people way smarter than me. So when you, when you make your broccoli sprouts, you get a potential of about 50 times more sulforaphane as a result than you get from eating just broccoli, even raw broccoli. Of course, this is raw broccoli, broccoli sprouts. Now, in the broccoli sprouts, as you eat them, you're chewing them, right? You have to chew them. And when you chew them, you're breaking apart the ingredient and releasing it and also the enzyme that acts on it. So the, the ingredient is called um, glucoraphanin and the enzyme is myrosinase. Now together in your mouth and in your, you know, as you continue to eat it, forms another molecule called sulforaphane, which has a number of activities, I believe, uh, PI3 kinase, uh, uh, maybe it's inhibitor, and uh, also NF-kappa-B inhibitor, as far as I remember, or maybe it's the other way around, but whatever. Those are, those are the pathways, I believe, that it's affecting. And um, uh, our, our uh, person that I admire, I was gonna call her my friend. Uh, we haven't met, so I can't call her my friend yet, but um, the uh, young lady who talks about 
uh, this on sulforaphane, whose name, of course, escapes me today. Um, but I'm sure it'll come come to you. It'll come to me by the time I edit this, and I can put her credit down below. So um, that is the little bed that I lay on my cereal, and then I take this is this is my bowl of natto that I have made, and if you go in here with a spoon, it has this slimy stuff, which is the good stuff. Here, like in Ghostbusters, slime is fun. And uh, so I eat a good portion of that, and of course I cheat and put some mustard on it, which I'll do in a second. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. There we go. We have Mustard, just plain old mustard. Why do I do this? Well, the Japanese, the Japanese put mustard and soy sauce on their natto when they eat it. They also slice very, very thin some uh, green onions and put on there. And then, of course, they're eating on a rice. And they often eat it at breakfast. So I guess that's why I decided to use the mustard. Now, the mustard does cut that slimy feeling a little bit. The flavor, to me, is not bad at all. People say it's a terrible flavor. It's really not. I grew up eating a lot of cheese. I was a Minnesota boy, dairy state, even though Wisconsin, of course, is known for the cheese. So when you have longhorn cheese, it has a similar flavor that the natto kinase, uh, or the, rather the natto does, not natto kinase. I don't know what the flavor of that particular enzyme is, but the, the natto itself. And so that's, that's uh, something I can enjoy, get along. And b besides that, when you eat any kind of legume or a pulse or a bean with your breakfast when you're eating carbohydrate and you add in your pulse or your uh, legume with it, it modifies the blood sugar spike. So in order to be kind to my blood vessels, besides giving them all these wonderful things, I'm also mitigating the effects of the starch. Not that I need to, but it's fine to do that, you know. And being an older person and not eating meat very often, maybe once a month, if that, uh, I also can use the protein. And of course, uh, my uh, broccoli sprouts are giving me protein as well. So I get protein from the, from the natto beans, the soybeans that are fermented, and from this, and even there's a little bit in the oatmeal. Good protein. So, uh, and a banana. I think I talked about banana before, perhaps, maybe not. So you, obviously you can see it, so you, you know it's there. That is my breakfast. Now today, often I will have uh, decaf coffee with Ganoderma in it as a, a black coffee, by the way. Uh, but today I went back to my healthy roots and put in some American ginseng tea. And uh, so American ginseng is the, uh, the happy ginseng that is good for us older people. And... Uh, the Chinese think that it, it's better for older people. It doesn't have quite so much heat in it, whatever that means. That is my story, and I'm sticking to it. I am Richard Lund, wishing you a healthy hundred years and eating my breakfast. Hmm.